Hi, my name is Hyun, and today I'll be talking about our work on developing a model for image quality assessment using convolutional neural network and clinical skin images. Since the onset of the pandemic, the use of teledermatology for patients has increased. These consultations are typically conducted through mobile applications that require patients to capture images of their skin lesions using mobile devices such as smartphones or tablets, which are then sent to the dermatologist for remote diagnosis. As an illustration, you can see in the figure that once the images is uploaded in the system, the dermatologist can view the image either during the live session where they have a remote conference call with the patients, or maybe during the off hours uh, in case the timing doesn't work out. However, the quality of the images received is often suboptimal with up to 50% of patients providing images that are poorly lit, off-center, blurry, or in combination. To better ensure a similar level of care to in-person care, high-quality images are essential, which is the focus of this project that is to develop a model that can assess image quality as good or bad. High-quality images is also crucial uh, for several reasons, which are for accurate diagnosis, and better communication with healthcare providers, patients, and specialists, ease of monitoring uh, progressions over time, reduce unnecessary visits, and may enable medical education and research based on proper consent. Hence, there is a need to improve image quality from patient-derived images to improve teledermatology and clinical workflow. Here in this work, we work with 1,200 patient-taken images annotated by 10 reviewers, and each reviewer annotated either 200 or 400 images each. These, these images were divided into train, validation, and test set, and each image had four annotations in total. One of the key questions that we asked was, is the image sufficient in quality to be included in the patient's chart on EPIC? We also collected uh, 300 additional independent study set images where 150 were patient taken images and the other 150 were taken by primary care providers. Before we dive into our methods, um, usually in the traditional convolutional neural network based uh, image quality assessment algorithm, it's pretty straightforward where the input image is fed into a neural network and output score is predicted. Usually in medical imaging, a pre-trained model is used, uh, which have been trained on thousands of natural images because the number of data sets in medical imaging is very small. In our study, we also implemented what's called a multiple instance learning, which is a type of a weekly supervised learning algorithm where the data sets are arranged in collections of instances called bags, and the labels are provided for each bag rather than the instances themselves. And this method allows to leverage weekly label data, which is prominent in diverse applications, uh, such as medical imaging and video audio processing and document classification. Multiple instance learning has been used for image quality assessment in previous studies where authors have attempted to assess the quality of an image by dividing the image into small patches as shown in the figure and aggregating the performance metrics uh, from those regions. Another approach that we took was an ordinal regression, which is a type of regression analysis that is used to predict an ordinal uh, or order dependent variable. Rank consistent ordinal regression is a variation of ordinal regression that learns to predict the ranking of the dep dependent variable rather than its exact value. For image quality study in natural images, there are hundreds or up to thousands of annotators that label the images from a scale of, of 0 to 10 or from 0 to 100. In our case, it will be very difficult to get 100 clinicians or more to annotate the labels as it would be very time consuming. And this, these images, we already collected the answers in the binary form instead of a scale. Thus, however, instead of uh, treating the image as a binary label, we apply ordinal label based on the annotator score. 
So if all of the four agrees that it's a good quality, um, we give an ordinal label as shown. If all of them agrees it's a bad quality, we give an ordinal label as shown in the figure of zeros. And in between, if three agrees, two people agree, or one person agree, uh, we give the following ordinal label. And as for our binary label, we took uh, the majority rule. So if more than half agrees is a good quality, we'll consider it as a good quality. And vice versa, if less than half of the annotators consider it a good quality, we'll consider it as a bad quality. Uh, this is just a, a brief description of mathematical expressions of what rank consistent original regression looks like. Uh, so once the CNN uh, network um, calculates the weights um, and the biases, uh, it will uh, produce a G of X, a W, which represents the penultimate layer, which is a fully connected layer before the sigmoid functions. And this function is then converted with a sigmoid or with a linear bias that linear bias that is added and tuned. And for each rank, prediction is calculated and the loss is calculated as a weight, weighted cross entropy of a K minus one binary class classifier. And thus, this is an overview of an image quality assessment uh, network. Uh, for this study, we only train uh, with patient taken at home images. And in this study, we used a VGG16 uh, network, which has been popularly used for different tasks uh, related to skins. We also compared the performance between different models, such as resonant inception, and found that VGG showed the best performance. And once the prob pr probabilities um, are calculated for each region based on the multiple instance learning by dividing the image into multiple patches, these predictions are then aggregated uh, through average pooling and using ordinal loss functions, uh, we'll train the model and they'll output or give a predictions of whether a probability and based on the threshold, we'll either accept it as a good quality or reject it as a bad quality image. Here is the results on our study. We also performed the ablation study to see which one produced the best results, uh, starting with using just the whole image with binary classifications, all the way up to using multiple patches with original labels. In between, the other methods were using multiple patch and just doing binary classifications. And also the other one was using the whole image, but also applying an ordinal label. And here, we can see that based on the optimal threshold that was calculated uh, using Yoden's index, the metrics such as sensitivity, specificity, uh, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value are shown as follows. We can see that using multiple patch uh, with ordinal label gave the best results of an AUC of 0.885, sensitivity of 0.829, specificity of 0.74, a PPV of 0.906 and MPV of 0.645. In our scenario, we also wanted a high PPV since we wanted to make sure that all the images that are considered good quality are actually good quality images and minimize false positives. And this will allow the dermatologist to see less of false positive images, uh, which would be a bad quality being called a good quality images which may, uh, as we discussed, uh, give delay the, uh, their, deter their ability to make accurate diagnosis. We also wanted to further evaluate our model on the additional independent study set, which uh, included 150 patient images and 150 primary care physician images. Here uh, is a calibration plot. And before we dive into the independent study, I'll briefly describe what this is. So calibration plot depicts a graphical rep representation of the relationship between the predicted probabilities from model and the proportion of true probability. So a perfectly calibrated model would have points that are align, align along the 45 degree line, indicating that the predicted probabilities match the proportion of true outcomes. If a calibration plot shows that the predicted probabilities deviate from the actual outcomes, this may indicate that the model is biased towards one class 
for instance, the model may underfit or overfit, or that the data set is skewed. Uh, for example, if the model overpredicts the positive class, this may indicate that the data set contains a disproportionate number of positive samples. Thus, thus, resampling the proportion of positive and negative cases in the external validation set to match the distribution of the training set can be justifiable if the goal is to evaluate the performance of a model in a setting similar to the training data sets. And in our case, because most of we expect of this to work mostly with the patient taken home images um, and in this additional study set we included primary care physician images which are likely to have more good quality images we applied a calibration plot um, and we kind of adjusted the independent study set uh, by uh, resampling the proportions to match that of the training set so here is the results on the of the performance metrics of the independent study set the black line in the AUC plot, ROC curve, uh, represents the overall 300, 300 images, and the green, or the gray and the red represents the PCP images and the patient images, respectively. And before the calibration, um, based on the original 300 images, we achieve an AUC of 0.86, sensitivity of 0.82, specificity of 0.80, PPV of 0.96, and an MPV of 0.45. Although we achieved a really high PPV of 0.96, we achieved a very low MPV of 0.45. And by adjusting the distribution, uh, we're not able to achieve a similar AUC, uh, similar sensitivity and specificity, a slightly decreased uh, PPV, but overall improved the MPV uh, by 20%. And this kind of represents similar results to the test set uh, where we had achieved the uh, MPV of, or PPV of 0.90 and also MPV of 0.6. So in conclusion and future work, um, here we show that deep learning methods can be used to assess image quality uh, for potential use in enhancing clinical workflows, especially in teledermatology. We also want to expand our work by including more images of diverse diseases and skin colors. Um, and we also want to develop more sophisticated models that account for factors such as lightning, uh, lighting, condition, lighting conditions, image resolutions, and blurriness as a feedback.